Hello everyone, this is Evan Abrams, and in this After Effects tutorial, we're gonna animate a font. I'm not talking about using text animators, we've covered that in a lot of videos. I'm talking about breaking a font apart into its constituent glyphs, its, its letter forms, and animating each one of them in a compelling, interesting, and unique way. So I'll be taking you through the process of getting a file organized, breaking up a font into all these little discrete pieces. Then we're gonna get into some animation techniques that you can use no matter what font you happen to be animating. Then I'll show you how to bring it all together, how to make use of this thing that you've made, this beautiful collection of bespoke animations. So take a seat, relax, open up After Effects, and let's animate a font. Now, step zero is that we actually need to get a font. And while your computer is probably full of a lot of them, I picked this font up over at Envato Marketplace. It's called Dreamscape. There are links down in the description if you wanna pick that up. This font is like $12 over there. It comes with two versions. I love it. It's one of literally thousands available for license over there a la carte. Many of them come with multiple weights, multiple styles of formats, sometimes little filigrees. So it's a great value for the money. This font also happens to be available on Envato Elements. It's a yearly subscription service that gives you access to graphics and video and fonts and audio and all kinds of elements for one yearly fee. If you have a regular need for stock elements, I highly recommend you check it out. So if we want to animate all of these letter forms, we're going to need to break them into their individual compositions. We want one comp for each glyph that we want to animate in a unique way. So if we had to start from scratch in a new project, I would start by making a new composition and I'm going to name this lowercase a. Now we're going to make the width and height of this big enough so that we can scale it up and down later when we reuse this. And it needs to be large enough to accommodate any of the animation that might be happening outside and around the letter form. And the duration, it needs to be long enough to accommodate animating on, hanging out for a little bit, and then going away. So for me, that's five seconds. Since we're using a font, we want to take our text tool, click out here, but rather than typing anything, what I'm gonna do is use an expression to make sure the text is always named the same as whatever comp it lives in. I'm gonna hold down Alt, click on the stopwatch, and type in this comp dot name. And now, as you can see, this is the letter A. Set that to be white. I'm going to take its transform and reset it. So inside this comp, there will always be a text layer whose paragraph is set to the middle and lives in the middle center of this comp. So if I go ahead and duplicate this and we go here to A2, if you look at that, the text layer in A2 says A2. So then we change this to a B and we are good to go. But before we go duplicating, duplicating, renaming, renaming, what I want to do is make sure I have all of the components that I'll need in order to work in here. Maybe that means some adjustment layers. Maybe that means some null objects. But for me, it means that I want a guide so that any of the sort of angles that I get into later make sense. So I'm going to make one guide layer and I'm going to make one hold layer, I'm going to call it. Because at a certain point, all the animation is going to be done. Say maybe it takes two seconds to come on. And then maybe it'll take two seconds to go away. So we'll have a little bit of time hanging out in the middle. We need significantly fewer layers, literally just this one, to be visible at this time. Now the guide we want to turn into a, a guide layer, like so. Maybe color code things so they make sense. Now I would also recommend uh, making some copies of this if you intend to say, cut this up or turn it into shape layers or do other things to it. So just have one hanging out, maybe call this the work. And one last thing before we start duplicating it, I would like to set in some markers. So I'd like to set a marker in and change that to a protected region and then stretch this to take up all the time right up until uh, this hold takes over. Now, this is because when we go to use this later, it's gonna be easier for us to stretch and manipulate this. Then I'll set another marker, which I do by hitting the little asterisk key, turn this into a protected region and stretch that out as well. So we're all set up. Let's see how long it takes to uh, duplicate this and get it all set up. Although sped up with some tutorial magic, we now have from zero to Z all set up and ready for us to cut apart and do some cool stuff too. The first thing I recommend is to break up your letter forms into more basic geometry. That's exactly what I did here with a couple of masks. Just put a mask on the text layer, set it to subtract or put a mask on the text layer and set it to add. And you know, you can just duplicate and invert that relationship as you need. That's a quick and easy way to split up 
your letter forms, especially in a font like this. Now granted, that might not always be the case. With this M here, we actually had to convert it into a shape layer, which you can do by selecting any text and going create shapes from text. But even then, it's not super easy to carve up this shape layer here in After Effects. That's why I tend to use Illustrator for that kind of thing. Now, when it comes to moving things between Illustrator and After Effects, a lot of people like this Overlord plugin. I do as well. It's so nice to just be able to select a layer and then push it on to the other program. But if you don't have access to that kind of thing, you can always just select things out of this space, copy it, and paste. Then you'll be able to draw some lines on here maybe, and then I just extend them, letting the uh, auto snapping feature carry me along, and then either selecting everything and using the path builder to cut things up, or you can use your Pathfinder tools to cut things apart. And then bringing things back into After Effects is a little copy paste away, but because of having to rearrange after the paths come in, that's why something like Overlord was invented. Now, another benefit to breaking things into their shapes, if you wanna animate these paths in fun, unique ways. So converting your letter forms into shapes is a good idea. Breaking them up with masks is another idea. But once you actually start animating these things around, I really recommend you create a series of rules for yourself. By having a codified set of rules that you follow when you're animating these things will give a sense of harmony and cohesion when you see all the letters next to each other. What do I mean by rules? Well, in this case, the idea that whenever we have a long rectangle, it animates on by translating along the axis of its longest side. So long things tend to move that way which in this case is true for all of these shapes as they come on. And you see with the D, same thing going on here, except we have a different rule. What do we do when it's a curve? Well, if it's a curved shape, then our rule is we're gonna have it rotate as it translates. So these kinds of rules can help give you cohesion when you finally have all of the components together and you see them in action. When you have to work modularly, sometimes you lose the bigger picture. So definitely having some set rules will help you out and it makes it easier to come up with ideas how to move things around. Building off of that, you want a consistent sense of timing. You want all of your letter forms to finish animating at around the same speed. You want kind of the same density of movement happening in all of them. You want them all to feel similar to each other and they need to be interchangeable. Since you don't really know what word might be created out of these, you wanna make sure that every shape plays with every shape next to it. So you don't wanna get too crazy with movements that are gonna block out or obscure other letters. Now, the final tip here is to think procedurally. Always consider what things you can simply copy paste from one letter to another to speed up your process. So in this case, all the opacity keyframes are just copy pasted and we use the exact same kind of motion curve in the graph editor on literally every movement. So while each individual letter may actually seem a little bit tame and banal, once you slap all of these things together, suddenly the animation gets a lot more variety, a lot more interest. Hey, and speaking of combining, what do we do once we've got all these things animated? Once you've worked up your system that you wanna implement, once you've got all your keyframes in place, how do we put this stuff together? Well, one tip I recommend, just typing out a text layer, making sure that it is the exact same size, as in uh, the font is the same size, so it's 200 pixels, and inside here, all of these are 200 pixels as well. Well, we go ahead, we type out the word that we want, and then we just parent, holding down shift, all of these elements, to that one, and then you just shift them horizontally until the uh, terrible color is either covered up or is covering up all of the stuff, and then you're ready to go. But that doesn't give you a lot of flexibility for kerning and tracking for these. If you want something like that, we're gonna have to build kind of a little rig, and we're gonna use expressions, so please bear with me here at the end. It starts the same with putting out a text layer and then arranging all of your letters to go on top of that, kind of get your starting position. But you could have a different starting position if you want. It's totally fine. And then we need to draw a rectangle. So I drew this rectangle, making sure that it went horizontally from one edge to the other, and then vertically from the bottom anchor points to the top anchor points. That's the kind of box that we want to create here. Then I would go ahead and parent all of these letter comps and parent all of those 
to that layer. And ordinarily, when you start scaling things up and down, everything scales together, right? The children will be scaled along with the parent. But by using a little expression on the scale of all of those children letters, if that makes sense, this lets it ignore the scaling of its parent. It reverses it. As one scales larger, the other one scales smaller, back to 100%, and you end up with something that kind of looks like you have control over, over the tracking of your letters. And then you can also get them going uh, up and away from each other like this, which hopefully can give you some of the control you want. Now, I'll post this expression down in the description so you can just copy and paste it if you like. Now, having control of where these are is great, but we also need to control when they are. So to do that manually, what I like to do is just pretend that I'm kind of brushing the layers. So I kind of just make big movements to start with and then start to really refine uh, the shape a little bit more. It doesn't take me, you know, more than a moment to kind of get this into an arrangement that I'm happy with. And the same kind of works for adjusting the start and ends here. Because we made use of these protected regions, we can stretch the middles as much as we want. And our wonderful animation that we worked up at the beginning will be preserved inside this blue area. If you don't like to do all that manual clicking, you can always use the animation keyframe assistant sequence layers option. Unfortunately, that process of trimming a layer and then sequencing it and then expanding it again doesn't work so well on layers with protected regions. It seems to make some oopsies. So I would recommend if you do have to batch process a lot of layers, you look into a third party script, um, something like Lazy2 perhaps, which allows you to simply assign um, kind of a visual curve and then have it arrange the layers as you describe in this diagram, which is a pretty great interface, or maybe something more like Rifts is more your speed, and there are a whole bunch of others. We've been trying to solve this problem in After Effects for a while, but that should now give you full control of where these things are in space and in time, and hopefully that doesn't go to your head. And that is it. Thank you so much for watching and spending time with me here on the EC Abrams channel. I hope you've enjoyed learning how to animate a font, and I hope that you're now able to go and animate some fonts of your own. If you enjoy learning this kind of thing, then subscribe to this channel. And make sure you turn on notifications because we're putting up tutorials all the time. We even have a live show that goes on on Fridays if you want to ask some questions live and really get into it. So make sure you subscribe, turn on notifications so you don't miss either of those. If you end up making something awesome with this, and I'm certain you will, then please send it at me. I want to see what you're doing. Tweet at me at EC Abrams or tag me on Instagram at EC Abrams on there as well. If you want to get your hands on the font we used in this video, then head on over to Envato Marketplace or sign up for Envato Elements. There are links to the font we used, Dreamscape, down in the links in the description. That's it for me. Thanks again for watching and spending some time here on the EC Abrams channel. Be well, and I'll see you next time.